For what purpose does the gentleman from Colorado seek recognition? Madam Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number six, printed in House Report number 113-361, offered by Mr. Tipton of Colorado. Pursuant to House Resolution 487, the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Tipton, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Colorado. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and I'd like to thank Chairman Graves and Chairman Goodlatte for all of their work, and I'd like to yield as much time as I may consume to myself. Madam Chairman, I rise today in support of my amendment to Title III, the Regulatory Flexibility Improvements Act, which will ensure a requirement that under current law, the Regulatory Flexibility Act, or RFA, remains intact. As the 1970s came to a close, Congress took note of the challenges that small businesses are facing. They were struggling to run their businesses while complying with an increasing number of complicated regulations. This led to the passage of the Regulatory Flexibility Act in 1980, which was designed to improve agency rulemaking. Under statute, the federal government agencies looking to regulate the private sector must evaluate the costs of doing so on small businesses, and where the costs are found to be significant, seek less burdensome alternatives to their proposed actions. A key piece of the RFA is Section 610, the Look Back provision, which requires agencies to periodically evaluate the necessity of every existing regulation that has significant economic impact on a substantial number of small businesses and determine whether those regulations should be amended or rescinded to minimize burdens on small businesses. As part of Section 610 review process, agencies must annually publish the list of regulations they plan to review in the Federal Register. This amendment makes a technical correction to the text of Title III to ensure this current annual publication requirement remains in place. It is entirely appropriate to exercise for the agencies to review old regulations and weed out ones that are outdated, ineffective, or overly burdensome. Ten years is a lifetime in terms of our private sector's ability to radically transform marketplaces. Reviewing the actual impacts of existing regulations every ten years just makes sense. Understanding the real-world consequences of a regulation on small businesses and taking into account changes in other areas of federal, state, or local law that may affect the necessity of the regulations are just a few of the reasons that make these reviews absolutely essential. The regulatory burden for small businesses has not lightened since the passage of RFA. In fact, agencies have been so busy issuing new regulations that they have sometimes failed to comply with already existing requirements to annually publish their list of regulations to be reviewed and then to review them. This simply is unacceptable. This amendment will relieve federal agencies of any ambiguity as to whether or not this annual publication requirement still exists and to ensure that small businesses can continue to make their voices heard after a regulation has become implemented. I urge members to vote yes on this amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? I rise in support of this amendment, Madam Speaker. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. It is to my horror that I would, uh, that I would uh, uh, agree to this amendment, but it simply uh, corrects a drafting error, and so we do not oppose this amendment. It makes a thoroughly flawed bill slightly less thoroughly flawed. And with that, I will uh, yield the remainder of my time. The gentleman from Georgia yields the balance of his time. The gentleman from Colorado is recognized. I thank the, the gentleman for his support uh, of this amendment and uh, speaks very, very important point. Uh, we've got to make sure that the agencies are actually doing what the law is requiring. This clarification simply achieves that. And with that, with the gentleman yield? Uh, I yield to Chairman Goodlatte. The I gentleman thank the gentleman for yielding, Virginia and I, too, support uh, his common sense amendment and uh, urge my colleagues to join in making it unanimous. The gentleman from Colorado is recognized. Uh, with that, I yield back, Madam Chair. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Colorado. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed.